Welcome to the DeepMind headquarters in London. DeepMind is a world leader in artificial intelligence. They're widely known for their AlphaGo and AlphaZero AIs and applying their breakthroughs to scientific and medical problems. Similarly to how DeepMind has developed AIs for Go and chess, they are now working on an AI for StarCraft II. StarCraft II is a real-time strategy game for the computer. In StarCraft, you choose one of three unique, unique races, build an economy to advance your technology and gather units, and try to outwit your opponent. It takes a great deal of speed, dexterity, and strategic planning. And what exactly is the role of Blizzard here in this partnership? Blizzard and the StarCraft II team has worked really hard to create a special version of StarCraft II. Uh, we've actually released to the public some uh, tools in this version of StarCraft II, but also worked very closely with the team at DeepMind. Uh, it's not exactly the same version of StarCraft II that players get at home. It's got the same rules, but it is geared towards AI research. And there's some very important differences uh, I should mention that because we've geared it for research, it really isn't set up to do things like live observing. Um, so the games that we're going to watch today will be from replays. Why does DeepMind look at StarCraft as the next game, the next thing that you want to kind of pursue and make an AI for? Right. So, well, first and foremost, the, the mission at DeepMind is to build a, an artificial general intelligence. And to do so, it is quite important to benchmark how our algorithms or our agents, as we call them, perform on a wide variety of tasks. Um, so these tasks, there's quite a few of them that we've tackled in the past. Um, Atari being perhaps the first video games that we kind of started from, um, as well as Go, Chess, and many other games. And then for us, um, StarCraft afforded some pretty unique um, sort of research challenges that were for us kind of the obvious choice as a kind of a next step for our agents to perform um, at a very good level. Uh, and the one perhaps that I would highlight from, from this graph we're seeing is the fact that in StarCraft, uh, you don't see the board all the time. There's this notion of imperfect information, as you probably know. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so, so that means that an agent must kind of predict uh, estimate what the other uh, player is doing all the time and there's all sorts of interesting things that emerge um, and perhaps the other obvious one as opposed to perhaps go is like the fact that it's real time so you really must act now otherwise you might lose the game so those are a few of the highlights um, of why starcraft is such an interesting research challenge for us all right that sounds all awesome but well, what can you tell us what are we going to see today right so in terms of what the games are going to be like. There's a few match conditions that you know are useful to, to go over. Mm -hmm. um, so the first is the map. We are playing on just one map called Catalyst mm -hmm. um, that you know used to be in the ladder, so it's a, just a full map. Uh, the game version we're playing is slightly old. It's 4.6.2. I believe that's the one that was played at BlizzCon for the finals yep. back in November. That's correct. Uh, and then perhaps the last not least detail is we are playing Protoss versus Protoss matchup. Uh, and then a couple of details, perhaps, is that the agent um, plays under limited actions per minute. It doesn't click, you know, insanely fast. We have more details on that later, but I think people probably are more excited to, to <laughs> excited to see the games first. And we also played sort of a series of five games um, against, you know, people, um, professional gamers that we'll will will announce uh, in a second. All right. Well, I I mean, I'm pretty excited to, to see this alpha star going up against a pro gamer. Why don't we go ahead and talk? Who is the first pro gamer that we're going to be seeing here today? So the pro gamer, I mean, obviously, we tested the agent in-house against, you know, our own, like, players at DeepMind. I am not the, that good, but there's actually someone who is you know, reasonably good. Um, and then sort of we decided, okay, the agent might be ready to face a slightly, um, you know, bigger challenge. And we talked to Blizzard about, you know, can you recommend someone to play against, someone who knows the game, and, and so on and so forth. And they recommended us uh, to contact Liquid TLO. Well, Dario, as we mentioned previously, we're going to be watching some PvP games today. Now, it's been a little while since you played Proto, so how, how are those Proto skills these days? Well, I I specifically prepared for the for the match um, playing Protoss. I played about 100 games of Protoss um, prior to the matches I played. And, you know, it's not a pro level but it would probably still be in the top one percentile of all players on the planet. So it, it's decent, just not professional. Okay, check those okay, out. 
And I guess it's time to get into that game with our wonderful observer, Mapu, Kevin Kremser. Let's do it. All right, then. I'm so incredibly excited. Oh, my God. Like you've said multiple times, a lot of people here, they've seen this. We have no mm -hmm. idea. I can't wait to uh, really break down some PvP. Once again, guys, this was played on the BlizzCon patch, but it's still a very recent patch. So we have yep. loaded into Catalyst. All the games will be played on Catalyst. All the games will be Protoss versus Protoss, but then I can't wait. Uh, yes. Obviously, we're looking at the main base of Liquid's TLO right now, but I want to see that other main base. Yes, so this is Alpha Star. This is an AI that uh, we don't know how good it is yet. And uh, we'll go over some of the, the fine details of the game, but already we have some interesting things happening for a Protoss versus Protoss. You notice that up here, TLO is making buildings right at that small choke point, that small ramp. Mm -hmm. This is a tactic that we use in Protoss vs. Protoss to make kind of a wall so that your opponent can't get into your base. But Alpha Star is skipping that altogether. There are very few Protosses in Europe that don't wall off. I like to think that I'm one of them. <laughs> now, what you guys can maybe ask yourself, what's the benefit of not walling off? Technically, you save a little bit of money. Like, mm -hmm. you save a few resources, because every... Whoa, that's a lot of probes, by the way, just <laughs> chasing around. This is not optimal gameplay, I think, Then No, no. Because that's yet. quite a few probes. <laughs> not. I mean, technically, you can say it's scouting, but that's a lot of probes bouncing around. And at the highest level of StarCraft 2, we like to think that we're all very efficient and very clean with our bolt orders. Mm -hmm. So every probe that can be gathering resources early on, it's very worried about cannon rushes, it seems like. Yes. In a regular <laughs> game, if we are casting this in a normal way, we say that these two adapts of TLO are guaranteed to kill eight, nine workers. And in start of two terms, that means that you are incredibly far mm -hmm. ahead. If you can pick up that many workers of your opponent early on, you are going to be very far ahead. Well, right now we see the Adepts using their Shade ability to get in here and start attacking probes. You see that TLO is already eliminating some of these workers. Now, Alpha Star is trying to target them down as best as he can, but this is pretty significant damage, I would say. I must say this is a really interesting exchange because even though Dario was able to pick up four or five probes there, which we normally say is a very big deal, you could say that the maximum amount of workers that you want to have on your minerals in this phase in the game is 16, maybe mm -hmm. 18. Alpha Star technically still has that, at least. It's mining a little less gas, but when it comes to mining minerals, it's still mining more than enough, and it did pick off to adapt. So I wouldn't say it's the greatest start for Alpha Star. I don't think it's the cleanest mm -hmm. or most optimal start, but it's also not game over and by any means. I mean, I feel like it's a good position right now for TLO overall. Yep. Well, it seems like his uh, units are a little bit out of position to keep these two up. Look at the micro. Wow. The star are actually getting quite some damage done. I mean, that evens up the score. At yeah. Least. <laughs> well, the worker count we can see at the bottom right now, it's 24 workers for TLO and 25 for Alpha Star. So. Overall, I guess Alpha Star has recovered from the early games. As yep. We saw Alpha Star is also going for the robotics facility. Is getting a warp prism. This warp prism is going to allow Alpha Star to be aggressive on the other yes. side of the map and should be able to pull off some pretty nice micro. I, I love see. how Alpha Star is truly really respecting the Oracle as well. It's mm. like, no, there is an Oracle out. We'll just leave a couple stocks at home, but at the same time, still try to make something happen on the other side of the map. And this is actually kind of scary for TLO yeah. because, yeah, Phoenix is about to come out soon, but once again, this War Prism is going to allow Alpha Star to micro these units incredibly well. And yeah, I mean, well, it, so far the micro is good. It's it's not like perfect micro that we're watching at the moment. But look at this, getting backwards, kind of kiting everything with these stalkers. Some good juggling going on. That War Prism still <laughs> alive, though very low on health. Yeah, a couple of stalkers are very low on health as well. Nice pick up there on the Oracle. So both air units went down for TLO, but still has an expand. It's still trading out quite hmm. decently, I would say, in the middle of the map. But if you take a look at the army supply, the army of Alpha Star is actually quite a bit bigger. Now, obviously, we left four or five units on the other side of the yeah, map. Yeah, yeah. So those units can technically join for the next push. And since the shield battery went down for TLO as well, this can actually get a little bit oh, dicey. You're, you're quite right. Even though uh, TLO right now has an economic advantage having two bases to one, I don't know that he's going to be able to hold this assault from Al Alpha Star. I think this is maybe a moment where you can see that TLO is not a natural Protoss player because I think the start was good for TLO. Mm -hmm. And I think there was time to be ready for this. 
Uh, it's still not over, but the army of TLO is very small compared to the army of Alpha Star. Yeah, the TLO is in a dire position right now. Uh, these Sockers just going in and out, dodging all the damage that TLO is trying to give to him and kind of choosing when to take these battles. It feels to me like so far these attacks have been very well planned by Alpha Star. And they're relentless. Does not stop. I mean, no. uh, Tim said he was worried that perhaps the Alpha Star was going to be incredibly turtly. Well, it seems like the opposite. Turtling yeah. is, we, is a term we use for a player that just never attacks. I think it's safe to say that Half Star is the opposite. It loves to attack. Well, <laughs> that is it. The GG is called the good game here from TLO. And the first game from Alpha Star against a pro gamer goes to Alpha Star.